Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And I'm excited today because hiring is something that uh, companies are having challenges with, finding the right people. Uh, there are resource constraints in terms of not enough people, not enough right people. So how do we hire the right people? How do we find a good fit? And I'm super excited to have uh, Dan Fantasia with us. He is an expert in this space and he's gonna share his expertise. Uh, he's been in the field of uh, sales recruiting since 1997 and he founded Treeline in 2001. His executive focus on, oh, exclusive, excuse me, his exclusive focus on helping uh, companies to build world-class elite sales teams has helped to change the lives of over 3,300 uh, sales professionals. He's built deep knowledge in what it takes to build and grow top producing business uh, and is a proven sales leader himself, an innovator. Uh, he has created a positively charged culture uh, that promotes the good in every person, resulting in the team that has developed the best in class methodologies and technology that continues to revolutionize the industry. So we're going to hear more about that. Dan, welcome to the show. Hi, Fanny. Thanks for having me. So there's a lot of interesting things in there, right? We'll, we'll, we'll maybe touch upon uh, some, some different things. But how would you assess the marketplace right now? So, you know, we've been through many phases in the last couple of years, right, where uh, people had to let people go because of COVID, because they, they uh, maybe had constraints where they weren't open, they weren't able to get to the office place. And then you had the great resignation where people were deciding, no, we don't want to be here anymore. Where are we now? Like, are we in a new phase? Like what's going on with the, the hiring? Yeah, industry? It, it is, it is a confusing time. We have some, you know, we have obviously individuals looking for new opportunities coming to us because they're being laid off and we have clients that are hiring like crazy. Um, and what we're finding is that for the companies that are looking to hire, it is a challenging time because there is so much white noise. And what I mean by that is because there is some layoffs, um, the market is somewhat confused. And so when you go to recruit, when you're looking for top talent, the, one of the biggest challenges, Penny, for our team, for example, is that they're overwhelmed with so much noise, right? Uh, people that are getting laid off are applying to jobs that are not a great fit for them, or they're connecting, uh, uh, you know, for, you know, um, and applying to all different positions or connecting with our company and other companies. And so the challenge is there's almost too much. You, you can't keep up with the volume. And so companies struggle to assess and find the top talent for their organizations because they're overwhelmed with so much talent finding interest in their positions. Yeah. You know, I could, I could see even before, you know, uh, some of these challenges is that, that it is a problem. The influx of having so many uh, candidates to go through and, you know, to have to review each one and, and, and really sometimes that can be just that overwhelm of having so many candidates to go through uh, is, is a key. How do you advise people and how do you do this yourself? How do you keep from getting overwhelmed in that process? What, what is it about your process that makes finding the right people easier? Yeah, you, you know, it is, it is one of our biggest challenges um, because when you think of the pipeline of candidates, you know, if you're stuck at the top of the funnel, right, Penny? Yeah. There's no real authentic dialogue or communication because it's just a lot of back and forth white noise and communication. Yeah. So what you're really trying to do, what we, what we really try to do is we are looking for and focusing on skill sets that match the exact needs of our clients' requirements, right? If we don't have that exact fit, then unfortunately we have to, we can't spend as much time working with individuals on a, a particular opportunities because we need to focus on the individuals that meet the requirements and that becomes very challenging penny because you're trying to you do not want to insult or offend the audience that you're working with so you want to be very cautious not to not to waste their time 
but you also want to make sure that you're not wasting your time yes. because ultimately you can interview and talk to lots of great people that are not a good fit. And now all of a sudden your time is gone. You, you know, you're wasting it on, um, you know, building relationships, but you're not moving forward or getting closer to hitting the target to help your clients hire the right person for the company. Right, right. And, a, and just as much as time as it takes to do all that interviewing, a bad hire is super costly, right? Yeah. The time that you invest in, in getting that person on board and then them not being culture fit, not having the skills that you need and so forth. So, so what I'm hearing you say is really get clear on that job description and what the skills are required what the desired outcomes, what is that person going to be doing and what are the skill sets that you need for them to get those outcomes? Yeah, right. you're exactly right. You're exactly right. So why, you know, that seems obvious to me, like, Ew. so what's so difficult about that? Why are people not getting that right? Well, I'll, I'll, one of the biggest reasons is most of the time people don't understand uh, the amount of effort it takes to find top talent. And as a result, because they misjudge the um, the human capital required to find these people, they don't have enough resources to do it. And so as a result, because they don't have enough resources to do it, they're reliant on a post a job postings. Post a job and hope a great person is going to come to you. But that's not a wonderful strategy. It's not a great strategy at all. That's kind of, oh, hopefully, luckily, pray and pray. Right person. Right. But back to your last point, when a company works with us, if they, we, we spend a lot of time understanding the requirements, hard skills and soft skills, and the characteristics that work in a specific selling environment, so that when we go to market, we understand the exact skill set so we can find the right candidates for your organization. And the advantage for us is that of course, we've been in business for 22 years, so we have a strong network of hard-to-find talent that others just don't have access to. Mm -hmm. And then we save companies time by doing all of that heavy lifting, by spending all of that time qualifying candidates to make sure it's the right company, the right industry, the right job, the right title, the right location, the right compensation structure. All of those things are critical. And that is a, that becomes a real time suck for our organization and other companies Figuring out that information, qualifying candidates to make sure they meet your requirements and they're fully interested in the opportunity it takes a tremendous amount of time. And unfortunately, in sales, it is a requirement. It's mm -hmm. not like other type of opportunities. And the reason why I say that is because there are a lot of personality characteristics that are so critical to be a successful salesperson that a resume alone will not tell you if a person's a good fit or not. And that means that we have to pick up the phone every time and have that authentic conversation to figure out who a person is, what they've done, and of course, what they're looking for. And once we figure that out, then we can help companies and candidates find a great match. Right. Interesting. So what are um, what are some of the things that that make for uh, a you know a really top talent salesperson? What are some of the things you're looking for? Well, it's it's a, that's a almost an impossible question to answer because every company is different. You know, the, um, the culture of the organizations are different. The, the, the selling, the sales characteristics are different. So for example, if you are a transactional sales environment and your average deal size is $20,000 and your sales cycle is two to four months, um, but you're interviewing candidates that are strategic in nature. They have an average deal size of, let's say, a million dollars and a sales cycle of nine to 12 months. And when you interview that person, they're going to seem wonderful and they're going to sound great and they're going to present incredibly well. Unfortunately, hmm. they're built for a strategic selling environment. And that's how they're, that's, those are the sales characteristics of that individual. So when you go to hire them for your organization, they quit after four to six months and they quit because they're not built for a transactional environment. They're not built for high activity, outbound, net new, you know, a client acquisition. They're built for strategic thinking, long mm -hmm. sales cycle, complex deals. So what happens is if a company doesn't understand their own sales characteristics or the selling characteristics of their environment, they can easily get that wrong. 
And when they get that wrong, unfortunately, it produces a bad hire. And once you get a bad hire, then now you're just delayed and missing your numbers and, and struggling. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, example, because I think that really makes it clear in that, um, you know, when I, it, it connects the, the previous question that I asked too about how are they getting it wrong in their description, right, is part of they're getting it wrong is because they may not know the person who's putting this up might not be the sales leader, it might be the HR person, and they might not understand the sales cycle and what type of person that they're really looking for. And so the descriptions are inadequate, you know, or, or even just not updated. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, you know, you, you really do need to understand your environment and the, and be, I didn't even think of that. Right. I was mm -hmm. thinking more of uh, some of the general characteristics, but like you said, there's different types of salespeople, you know, for, for different environments. So that's, um, as there is for any type of position, right. You can, it's the same for leadership, right. Is it your, your different environments are going to call for different types of leaders. Uh, and, and each one of them will be successful in the right environment, but not in another. So that was a perfect, uh, example. Oh, great. Yeah, good. The, you know, it's funny when we talk to companies, um, of course, we do a, a you know a kick a kickoff call, and and uh, in that conversation, we ask a lot of questions to identify and define exactly what they're looking for, and and the reason we do that is because um, we produce very we we guarantee our clients that we will produce their first candidate in three days, mm -hmm. and so wow. uh, that's pretty yeah. good turnaround. Yeah, well, it's important, you know, when you're hiring salespeople, we we want to make sure they know we are dead serious and focused, and that we will we, we you know this this is important to us. But um, as we consult with companies, um, we spend a lot of time, you know, just, you know, brainstorming and walking through, you know, the, each particular scenario, you know, scenario. Um, and as we go through those scenarios, many of them think they know exactly what they're looking for. But it's amazing as we start to introduce them to candidates that meet the exact criteria they gave us. Right. They pivot. They change. They they get they're not used to meeting this level of talent many times they haven't had access to it before and so as we start introducing them to them um uh they start to learn and shift and they mm -hmm. pivot just a little bit in the market and what they start off what they start the search with many times it gets tweaked a little bit and they actually end up looking for someone a little bit different than they thought they would right Right. Well, that's the power of, of good questions, right? Is, is to really be able to dig underneath the surface to make sure they're getting not what they want, but what they need. Right. So sometimes what we want and what we need, there's a, there's a gap in between there. So that's a, yeah. a, a great example. How do you feel about, so one of the things that I used to do as a strategy when I was doing, you know, coaching for sales teams, which, which I don't do anymore, but I used to say, well, take your best salesperson right? And create an avatar to understand what is that person doing, you know, that's, that's working, right? To really understand if you were to create a profile out of that best person. Um, what's good and what's bad about that strategy? It's a great strategy. I actually wish, you know, more companies would do it. For, for us, what, ha what tends to happen is when we are working with a company to hire, and we'll ask, what does your top salesperson's background look like so so i know i know you asked me about what they're doing presently but a lot of times we'll ask what does their background look like uh -huh. nine times out of ten a company has lost perspective and so they say our top salesperson has this background but that's not what we're looking for anymore it was a different that person is different right. than what we want now we want these characteristics we want to people from our competitors and they totally change. Um, they change their recruiting methodology, even though their top producers have <laughs> the soft and hard skills to be uh, to have done incredibly well in the organization. Right. And so far, right, we ignore because... what's right in front of our face. <laughs> yes. Hello, this yes. is how we get in our own yes. way, right? Yes. <laughs> it's like, well, this is the top producer, but this isn't what we want anymore. And I, you know what, Penny, it's crazy. That is a conversation that happens regularly. It is amazing how companies lose perspective. And so the second thing is then, yes, uh, I would always look to see what top producers are, are doing differently 
than the rest of the team. And I think everything you can learn from everything that a, a, a that that a, a top producer is is uh, is doing. So that being said, like, what's wrong with that strategy? Is it is is there a time where you'd say, well, um, maybe there's someone who's even better than that person, so that you're putting a, a, a you know an assumption that just because they're the best salesperson that they have, that that's the best salesperson for that company. Is there right. is there anything there? Yeah, I think. Um, well, again, it depends. It, it, it's so unique because it depends on the corporation and the company and the top producer. Um, typically, what we would try to do is, um, well, a, a, and the, um, I guess, and the the management team or the manager that is going to be hiring this person. And the reason why I say that is because many times. The reason why a manager will look for domain expertise is because it will help them ramp the person up more quickly and more effectively. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, and you know this, Penny, it doesn't prove that the person will be a top producer. Right. It just makes it easier for the manager to ramp somebody up that has some domain expertise. But if you're trying to build a world-class sales organization, the ultimate would be have domain expertise in the soft characteristics that are equivalent to what your top producers look like so that you can, you know, again, build, you know, hire, you know, elite, elite athletes for your sales team. Right. So my recommendation, you know, so, you know, it's my recommendation that, you know, sales talent and ability uh, in time will outproduce just domain expertise because those sales characteristics that of a top producer will learn over time the domain and right. they will get the expertise but they typically a a, a c level or an average producer doesn't typically have the um again the soft skills to typically become a, a top producer and, 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 you know, in their next organization, if they've always been an average producer, they're likely going to be continue to be an average producer. Okay. That's an interesting, um, statement, right? It is. So what is that? So is that because, so you're saying that an average producer is going to go to another company and they'll probably remain, you know, that average producer. So is that because of the level of motivation of that person? Uh, is that because of the skill set? Uh, you know, because I would think that some people will think, well, our environment, we're better leaders. So mm -hmm. we're going to help that person to either going to be better with us because, you know, we're, we're a better organization or we have a clearer product. It's a shorter sales cycle or whatever, you know, uh, you know, how does, I'm interested in your opinion on that. Yeah. So I think, can you restate the question? So um, yeah, I know I didn't really ask the question, did I? But it was kind of like, you know, where, where, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to, how to phrase the question because you're saying that an average producer will remain an average producer where right. what's holding that average producer at the average level, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, typically um, I, I had written a, a blog on this too. It's, Usually, in the end, um, top producers are they are they're they're workers. They work, and I'm not saying that you burn people out and you work them to death, and that's the only thing that makes them a top producer. That that's not what I'm saying. But I am saying one common denominator is that if you look at top producers, they like to work, they like the work itself, and they typically will outwork their peers because it's important to them it's something that is they they strive for so is it a level of effort that they're willing to put in that others aren't or you know because when you say they're will they want to work hard they're working at it right what if somebody works smarter versus you know they can do in less effort what somebody does in more effort yeah well yes that that could be the case but typically what we found is that um, if you if as you're interviewing a candidate, if you look to understand their background, and when I say their background, I mean from when they were a child growing up until now, you'll find some common traits 
that, you know, they rode their bicycle at 16 years old to the local pizza place because they wanted to get a job and they worked really hard at it. And, and there's just the, all of these examples of them going above and beyond, you know, maybe they were the captain of their volleyball team or their field hockey team or their soccer team. And the reason why they became the captain is not because they were the best players because they had the greatest leadership and the strongest work ethic, or it wasn't natural talent that got them gotcha. there. It was the fact that they, they got to practice early and they stayed late. Right. So it's effort, but I would say that doesn't that make a great employee anywhere, not just in sales, yes, but totally to look back and to see that this person puts in the effort they want it. They are willing to work for it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Definitely. I thought what you were going to say was uh, I, uh, when I went to work for Chet Holmes and Tony Robbins uh, and, you know, sales was part of the, the, it was coaching and sales. We were responsible to, to sell, you know, um, into our coaching program. And they asked us, which parent were you closer to? And apparently this was a key to your sales um, ability or whatever. So I, I thought that was interesting. Um, really? Did that work? Yeah. Uh, it said if you were closer to the opposite parent, that that meant uh, that the, I forget the psychology behind it right now, but I was like, okay, whatever. Um, that that had some kind of a, uh, uh, a pull towards your ability to sell or your no uh, acumen. I did not know that. But I, people listening, you have to research it. You know, I'm not <laughs> right. sure. It could be something that they just threw in there. I mean, they had some very interesting questions and interesting ways of approaching it um, that, that I haven't seen before. What's a question that you ask that's, um, you know, I don't want you to give away your secret sauce, but what's a, you know, a, a question that you ask that really helps you to determine uh, a candidate's value? Uh, the First question I typically ask, or it's not even a question. The first thing I typically do is I will say to a candidate, uh, I would not consider this an interview. I would consider this just a conversation. And I don't want to, I don't plan on selling you. And I don't really want you to sell me. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a good match here. Because if there's not a good match and we're deceiving one another, oh, yeah, sure. what's the, what, what, you know, what's, what is the use? And then when we personally interview here at Treeline, of course, there's lots of characteristics that we look through, but we also hire based on our core values because identifying if a, if a person that we're interviewing shares the same core values that we share as a corporation it's a, it's just a really good fit and it really promotes, you know, the, the organization, the culture of the company and so totally. much more. I, I, I understand that. And I still, am going to come back to this. I, I want you to uh, give the listeners a question that you ask, yeah. whether it's, you know, how do you find out somebody's core value is aligned? Whatever the question is that you want to share one question that you think would be valuable for people who are hiring. Yeah, well, so one of our core values, I'll just give you one sure. more fun, but um, one of our core values is do what's right. Okay. And so okay. we've always thought, all right, how do you figure out um, if a person does what's right? That's what we believe in. So one of the questions we ask is, um, have you ever parked in a handicapped spot? And it's just a simple question and right. um, and some people say, no, I've never, I just, I don't think that's right. I would feel as though that's wrong. Or someone would say, I actually have done that once. And, but there was a reason why. And, and uh, we appreciate whether they did or not, we appreciate the honesty, that open dialogue and communication that they're comfortable enough to say, yeah, I did. I actually didn't think it was right, but I did it. Or I thought it was okay because of this reason or what have you. Right. I like to ask that question because it's so simple and basic, but it really tells me a lot about their character. And we're such a genuine down to earth company, Penny, like doing what's right is really important to us. Hmm. And it really, it really helps to understand, uh, you know, who they are, what their beliefs are and, you know, how honest, how honest and open they are with their communication. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you for sharing. 
So we're at the end of our time together. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Dan, tell them where they can uh, reach you and all of that information will be in the show notes, but give them uh, give them your details. Yeah, I mean, you know, anyone, you can reach out to me directly. I mean, you can uh, connect with me on LinkedIn at Dan Fantasia. You're welcome to go to our website, which is Treeline Inc., which is at treelineinc.com. And you can fill out any contact us form or call me directly or email us anything you need help with when it comes to hiring. We're happy to help out. Or if you're searching for a new opportunity, feel free to contact us. And, and we are definitely happy to help. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you for being here, Dan. I appreciate it. Thank you, Penny. I appreciate your time. And thank you all for being here. There were some good, really good nuggets for you to think about when you were looking to hire. This you know, might have been specifically around salespeople, but really not, right? There were a lot of great thoughts in here about making sure that you're getting the right fit when you're hiring and that you're, you're really focusing on that. So looking for the right people, having the right team makes, uh, you know, makes work easier. It, uh, they fit into your culture. It makes people feel like they belong and people are more productive when they're working with a great team that they enjoy working with. So uh, make sure that you spend the time and the effort to get the right people on board. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode.